Have you ever played straight pool? If you have not, give it a try. When playing solo, you start with cue ball and object ball in hand, trying to pocket the ball and break out the remaining 14 so you can continue your run. Straight pool is excellent practice because you get to pocket lots of balls and you will learn a lot about cue ball control, smart pattern play, identifying key balls, using combos, caroms, and kisses, and solving problems like clusters and blocked pockets. After you run the first rack, you leave the last object ball and cue ball where they lie for the next break. Obviously, where you leave the balls is critical. Then you keep running and racking to see how many balls you can run continuously. For a challenge, try to run your age every year, starting on your birthday. This is obviously easier when you are younger, but as you get older it becomes a growing challenge. I've recently turned 56 and I've challenged myself to run 56 balls before my next birthday. To do this, I will need to run four consecutive racks without a miss. Let's see who can run the most balls, and let's see who can be the oldest person to run their age. I will post scores and video links in the video description as they come in. I hope you decide to participate. In the remainder of the video, I will offer some advice that might be helpful if you haven't played straight pull much or at all before. With the opening break shot, you can place the cue ball and object ball wherever you want with the remaining 14 balls racked in the standard triangle shape. You can use a classic large angle side break shot like this, but an easier and more reliable opening break shot is a center table side pocket shot down the tangent line. With topspin, you will usually get a good result. A square hit of one of the head balls works out very well. Here's another example. Top spin also works well for other hits on the lead balls. You just need to make sure you use enough top spin. If you don't, the cue ball will bounce back up table. And if you use too much topspin, the cue ball will head down table, although you will often have a shot. The last ball you choose to leave on the table is obviously very important. Generally, it is best to leave the break ball in this area next to the rack, where the cue ball will easily hit the middle of the side of the rack where it can better spread the balls. You also want to leave the cue ball in a reachable position, not too far from the object ball with as much cut angle as you can handle without being at too much risk of missing the shot. The bigger the angle, the more speed the cue ball will retain off the object ball to deliver more power into the rack. Sometimes there will not be good break balls available. In these cases, you can sometimes develop or manufacture a break ball. Here's a good example where I'm planning to bump the 13 into a more favorable position. That's a little higher than desired, but now I have a break ball. Here's an easy way to develop a break ball when there are two balls close together. It is also fairly easy to manufacture a break ball when the natural angle heads across the table into a ball in the rack area. Sometimes you can also stun across the table to easily bump a ball into break shot position. Probably the most important skill in straight pull is choosing a pattern to close out a rack to leave the chosen break ball and cue ball position for a good break shot. Here's a good example where I left a good angle on the key ball for the natural angle to head straight into the desired line of the break shot. Here's another example where I was able to roll each of the last three shots to get good position. A side pocket hanger is often a good key ball. It helps to get close to the key ball to make it easier to get position on the break ball. Here, I overhit the shot a little. It would have been easier to leave a natural angle roll shot to come off the cushion, but a straight draw shot also gets the job done. Always visualize the pattern and cue ball motion before you begin. Here, I'm using the 30 degree roll peace sign to see if I can just roll this into position. A little running left spin is needed to get the job done. Things don't always work out as planned, but as long as you get back into line for the break shot, you can continue your run. 
Here, I overhit the first shot. In a shorter position with an angle, I could have easily positioned for a stop shot on the 13 in the side. Instead, I need to force position with right spin. That wasn't quite enough spin, and now I need to stun with right spin to get a good shot at the 8. I used a little too much spin on this one, and didn't leave as much angle on the 8 as I wanted, but that works. See what happens when you don't have a bigger cut angle on the break shot? The balls don't spread as well. Here, I left a bad angle on the 1, and I need to send the cue ball across the line of the 5, making precise position more difficult. I left that straight, so I need to cheat the pocket a little and power stun the cue ball over for a good angle on the 13. I let that stun forward a little too much, and now I need to really bring one. Since the cut angle is extremely large, I decide to use lots of outside spin to help throw the ball in. The system for aiming with side spin, linked in the video description, really comes in handy in situations like this. Notice how follow with the side spin helped get the cue ball out toward the center of the table. There will always be problems for you to solve when navigating through straight pull racks. Sometimes you will have a ball like the 2 which is tough to get on and blocks a pocket for the 11. Here, I get to it early in the rack. It is usually best to solve problems as early as you can. Combination shots often come up in straight pull. Here, the 2-9 combo is lined up perfectly for an easy shot that I can also use to help break up the cluster of balls. Now everything has a pocket. Here, I am using the natural angle to break out a cluster very early where I have several possible follow-on insurance ball shots. When you break out clusters, you need to make sure you don't use too much speed. Here, I broke out one cluster, but created another. Here's an example where controlled speed yields a much better result. Sometimes, you will be unlucky on the break shot and get lots of problems to solve. Here, I have three clusters and a difficult opening shot. If a cluster is a wired combo like this 3-7, you don't need to break it out. I decide to load up with spin to attempt to break out one or both of the other clusters, which are a big target from this angle. That was almost perfect, but I still need another breakout shot. Now I can shoot the combo and everything will be in the clear. I can use the 8 as a break ball, but I decide to bump the 13 to develop another option. Straight pull involves lots of interesting strategy like this. Here's another good example. First, I set up a breakout shot that lets me hit the cluster from underneath, where I will send the cluster balls into the open, and where there are many insurance balls for possible follow-on shots. Unfortunately, I overspun that a bit and missed my target a little. If you want to be successful running lots of racks in straight pull, you need to be a little more precise with your cluster breakout shots. Luckily, I still have plenty of balls to use to break out the remaining cluster. That's a good reason for solving problems early rather than late in a rack when you still have options. That was a nice breakout shot, developing the 15 into break ball position. Sometimes, when there is a large cluster of balls, you can solve the problem with a wired combo in the rack. Here, I am checking to see if the 2-5 is wired to the corner. If it were, I could hit into the 9 to pocket the 5 and break out some of the rack. It isn't quite on here, but always look for these opportunities. I've said several times to solve problems as soon as you can, but sometimes it is better to wait a little. Here's an example where an early breakout just creates more problems. Sometimes, you need to get creative with shot selection and cluster breaking. Here, I don't have a straight shot to a pocket. However, with fast speed, I can kiss the 3 off the tangent line of the 8. I also get a little lucky with the 8 hitting the rack with good speed. There are many subtleties involved with break shot selection and deciding the type of spin to use based on cue ball and object ball positions. Entire books and videos could be filled with this topic alone, but I just want to cover a few useful pointers. First, when the break ball is close to the rack, it is very easy to visualize where the cue ball will hit the rack. Here, the cue ball will hit the 11 very squarely. 
In situations like this, the cue ball will naturally bounce back due to the larger effective mass of the rack, and stun is a good choice. When there is a big cut angle into the side of the rack like this, follow is usually the best choice. Here's another example. Sometimes, with a big cut angle and no follow, you can scratch. But with topspin, you usually avoid a scratch and get a good outcome. Now let's look at an example run so you can better see the big picture. This shot was a little careless because I really set the cue ball loose, but there were many possible balls for a follow-on shot, so I wasn't too worried. But in general, it is better to keep the cue ball on a tighter leash in straight pull. Here, I carelessly got slightly on the wrong side of the 15, but I can use inside follow to get back in line. Now the final three ball pattern is easy. Notice how I use follow here, as discussed earlier. That's a nice spread. This is a good position play into the line of the five ball shot. Here, instead of planning to break out the 113 cluster late in the rack, I decide to play for short side shape. Here, I have the perfect angle to come into the line of the one. Balls fairly close in a triangle like this often allow a good ending pattern. That was a good shot to make it easy to get shape on the break ball. See how easy this is? I should be able to do this all day long and break John Schmidt's record run of 626, right? Not. I carelessly missed the break shot because I was trying to use too much power to compensate for the relatively small cut angle. That ends the run at 29. I thought the Efren shirt, linked in the video description, would help me run my age, 56, but I still have lots of time before my next birthday to reach my goal. I need to run four racks straight. I plan to keep trying over the next few weeks. Wish me luck. I hope you decide to accept the Run Your Age Challenge. Straight pool is a great game and it will give you excellent practice. You will learn a lot about ball pocketing, cue ball control, selecting key balls, choosing smart patterns, and setting up and executing cluster breakout shots. You will also learn to stay focused during the entire run, even on the easy shots. In solo straight pool, you can't miss. If you do, the run is over. You don't get another shot at the table. You need to start over from the beginning. The discipline required will help you develop and improve your mental game, which is so important in pool. If you are not good enough to run your age yet, don't despair. Keep track of your run scores with all attempts, even if the scores are low. This will help you monitor your improvement over time. Your straight pool high run score is a good measure of your playing ability. Get started now, especially if you are young. It is a lot easier to run your age when you are 20 compared to 80. Remember, I will post scores and video links in the video description as you guys submit them. Let's see who can get the highest run score. And let's see who can be the oldest person to run their age. I look forward to seeing your scores and videos. Good luck and play well from Dr. Dave.